Now, after this insightful lab debate, I propose we move to our second stand interview, where we will be talking about Project Faro, which aims to protect the coastal and marine habitats in the Kirimbas National Park in Mozambique for food security and economic development. The Faro project was piloted by the Italian Agency for Development Corporation and implemented by the Oikos Institute. And if the internet connections uh, in Maputo and Cape Town allow for that, I should have both stakeholders of the Faro project on the call with me. The first one is Leono, Leone Tarabussi, who is the team leader environment and sitting in the Maputo office of the Italian Agency for Development Corporation, where he is also spearheading the program on resources, innovation and development for conservation areas. And we have Tanya Miora, who is based in Cape Town, South Africa, as meal expert of the Instituto Oikos. She is by no means a dietist or a cook, but rather an expert in monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning. Since 2017, Tanya has also been managing projects in the Aibo district in Mozambique, so she has been closely involved in Project Faro. A very warm welcome both to Leone and uh, Tanya here on the call. Uh, let me start by asking you, uh, Leone, could you please give us an overview of the approach that the IADC has taken on environmental protection and conservation of biodiversity in Mozambique, of course, if possible, with a special focus on seascapes and coastal areas. Yes, thank you. Good morning to everybody. Yeah, Mozambique is a country with 2,700 kilometers of coastline and is very rich in natural resources, biodiversity, and environmental uh, costly. And the country also is very vulnerable to climate change and has a limited capacity to cope with the effect of them. The Italian cooperation is working in the country since the 70s, mainly in rural development, education and health. But recently also we started a project in the area of environmental conservation and biodiversity protection. In doing so, we had a two-fold approach. On one side, we support scientific research as evidence-based policy-making tools for the sector and mainly by strengthening and empowering national laboratories and research institutions and universities. Some good examples of this are coming from the setup of the Bionomo portal through the SecoSuit project, um, which is a portal gathering scientific information on biodiversity from all around Mozambique and by different institutions. But also we are planning to establish the first national biodiversity conservation center in the country through the Reno project due to start recently. On the other side, we promote activities and projects of NGOs for community-based management of natural resources. And this is the case of the FARO project of Instituto Oikos. Um, this also encompasses protection of mangroves. Um, and why we think to mangroves? Because mangroves, as you said already, is a very important ecosystem, providing a lot of services useful for the life of local communities, foods, income, medicine, but also it is a nursery for fish. It also good, is a good retainer of carbon and protect coastline. And there's potential also for um, uh, ecotourism. For this reason, as an co Italian corporation, we plan to start a new intervention in the Maputo Bay soon, uh, supporting the Iñaka um, Marine Biology Station for research on mangroves, reforestation, but also including community-based sustainable management of natural resources and income-generating activities. Uh, thanks a lot for that, Leona. And indeed, what you said on uh, mangrove protection also relates to our lab debate. And we heard a couple of times already, indeed, the importance to connect with the local communities. Then I turn to you, um, Tanya. Could you perhaps give a brief overview of Project Faro and uh, uh, also the different key components of that project? Good morning to everybody. Uh, the FARO project, uh, um, the protection of the coastal and marine habitats of the Kirimba National Park uh, um, for food safety and economic development was implemented by Instituto Oikos over a period of three years, between 2004 and 2017. Um, the project was implemented in one of the most uh, beautiful areas in the northern part of Mozambique, the Kirimbas National Park, recently declared by UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. 
Uh, it is an area extremely rich in terms of biodiversity and variety of habitats, uh, but uh, it faces a number of challenges uh, uh, due to its vast areas that comprises of seven districts with a resident population of over 150,000 people. The challenge to biodiversity uh, is this further compromised by overfishing, illegal hunting, and the unsustainable harvest uh, methods within the park. The project targeted one particular district, Ibo, located in the coastal area and part of the archipelago. Uh, the main objective of the project uh, was to harmonize the social uh, economic development of the area, of the coastal area, with uh, the protection of its uh, territory and its natural resources. Um, the project involved a number of wide range of partners, from local uh, government to locally based NGOs and CBOs, uh, and local and international universities. Uh, the three key components of the project uh, um, are mainly uh, the improvement uh, of um, the park management through capacity building programs uh, to improve the technical and management skills of the park staff, and also to promote uh, scientific research uh, for the identification of key sites for biodiversity. The second component uh, is related to the improvement of the benefits for the local community, for the local population, especially in terms of food security and climate change um, uh, resilience to climate change effects through promotion, for example, of uh, uh, sustainable fishing techniques and the creation of locally managed marine areas. Uh, the last key component uh, is related to uh, local uh, economy diversification uh, and strengthening of small local entrepreneurial activities through training and uh, um, financial support. And this component specifically supported, the, supported uh, locally run activities in the tourist sector and also uh, the creation of uh, an ecology a place for hospitality, but also a place for uh, a cultural exchange between students, tourists and community, and uh, a place for research with the local universities. We have a couple of minutes left, uh, Tanya, so could you please very briefly try to summarize the strategy and also the, the, the tangible actions developed by the FARO project to promote the involvement of local communities in the management of natural resources and also the activities of heritage conservation? The project promoted, the, promoted basically a, a multi-level approach. Firstly, created the conditions for real involvement of uh, and ownership by the local community in this project. And secondly, promoted the co-development of environmentally and economically sustainable solutions. So with respect to the involvement and ownership of the local community, I want to share three concrete examples. The project promoted intense environmental education at community level and the school levels. And and in this regard, we developed two um, environmental education manuals, one for teachers and one for students, and that were introduced to all the schools, primary schools within the district. And based on the success of these manuals, they've been adopted at national level by the Minister of Education and Minister of Environment and are actually on in, this, in the current moment. They are being printed and disseminated through all primary schools in Mozambique so that environmental education can be incorporated in the curricula. Second concrete example has been uh, taking, considering the limited knowledge and experience among the community um, members of the role of ecotourism community-based the project uh, wanted to raise awareness and understanding of the crucial roles that this play for the development of the local economy and empowerment of the community. In light the of timing, example, apologies for interfering, Tanya. We, we may need to wrap up here, but I understand you've also been promoting co-development of sustainable yeah. solutions. Yeah. So, and exactly. For, we, so we promoted a, a broad consultation among communities for the elaboration of joint action plans with regards to co-management plan for fishing zone, as I mentioned, and promoting also a tourist plan. Okay, thanks. I need to wrap it up here, but thanks a lot, Leona Terabussi and Tanya Morin, for highlighting Project Faro to protect coastal and marine ecosystems in the Kirimbas National Park of Mozambique.